What is tinea sodium? Tinea sodium is one of the many species of cystodes or tapeworms that can infect human. Tapeworms are complex organisms having complex life cycles that requires at least two hosts for their completion. So tinea sodium in simple words is a pork tapeworm. This parasite is cosmopolitan. It is present throughout the world. It is especially abundant in those places where pork and beef are frequently consumed. The parasite is located in the small intestine. There, it develops by absorbing the nutrients from the food that the host eats. Adult worm lives in human intestine and larva form or cysticercus cellulose in pea. The adult form of this parasite looks like a flattened ribbon and creamy white in color. This parasite measures about 2 to 4 meters but sometimes 8 meters in long. This can be acquired by humans through the ingestion of the parasite's larval cysts or cysticerci in undercooked and infected pork. Like any other organisms, Cicillium has also its parts. The scolex acts as an attachment device with four suckers, hooks, and rustillium used to attach itself to the intestine of the host. It also has a neck that is between the scolex and the strablea. The strablea consists of proglutids. Every proglutid contains both male and female reproductive system that produces the eggs. The life cycle of Tisilium is indirect. It passes through pigs or other animals as intermediate hosts and into humans as definitive hosts. From humans, the eggs are released in the environment where they await ingestion by another host. In the secondary host, the eggs develop into oncospheres which bore through the intestinal wall and migrate to other parts of the body which sister Cersei form. The cysticerci can survive for several years in the animals. The diseases that are caused by T. cilium are cysticercosis and tenesis. Humans can be infected with T. cilium eggs due to poor hygiene or ingesting contaminated food or water. So, cysticercosis is an infection with larvae of T. cilium which develops after ingestion of ova excreted in human feces. So the larvae may develop in the muscles, skin, eyes, and central nervous system. Usually, it is asymptomatic unless larvae in invade the central nervous system. So th there are types of cysticercosis. It includes urocystocercosis, ophthalmic cysticercosis, and muscular cysticercosis. The next one is stenosis. Stenosis is a parasitic infection. It is an infection within the intestines by adult tapeworms. So stenosis is acquired through the ingestion of parasites, larval cysts in the undercooked and infected pork. So the diagnosis of T-cilium is made by examination of stool samples. Tapeworm eggs can be detected in stool 2 to 3 months after the tapeworm infection is established. Stool specimens should be collected on three different days and examined in the lab for TNA eggs using the microscope. Let's proceed to the symptoms of the diseases. Tinnitus is usually asymptomatic, but sometimes diarrhea, hunger pains, weight loss, and discomfort may occur. The symptoms of neurocystocercosis depend upon where and how many cysts are present, but the most common symptoms are seizures and headache. In the ophthalmic cystocercosis, the symptoms include the feeling that something stuck in your eye, swollen eyelid, problems closing your eye, dryness, tearing, itchiness, and burning sensation. The muscular cystocercosis are asymptomatic. So people ask if this disease has treatments, and yes, it has treatments. Infections are generally treated with antiparasitic drugs in combination with anti-inflammatory drugs. But if the patient is unresponsive in any drug treatment, surgery is sometimes necessary to treat cysts in certain locations or to reduce brain swelling. Let's proceed to the prevention and control. So the best way to avoid getting tapeworms is not to eat undercooked 
pork or vegetables contaminated with feces. Especially, wash your hands with soap and warm water after using the toilet, changing diapers, and before handling food. The adults shouldn't be the only one to know how important washing your hands is. So we should also teach the children the importance of washing hands to prevent them from getting infected. Also, wash and peel all raw vegetables and fruits before eating. Lastly, use good food and water safety practices while traveling in developing countries. We should always remember that prevention is better than cure.